Hey everyone, Deej is here, bringing you another action-packed Ram Vance 4 replay. Don't forget to smash that like button until your fingers bleed, as Daddy NordVPN tells us. Anyway, got an actual good game for y'all today. I don't want to say too much, but this game rhymes with a hanger and starts with a bang. So uh, today we got a match between Inca Gark and Tordred, two of the top five Fog players of all time, basically on this map called Assassins. Some of you are probably already familiar with this map, Assassins. It's been the Global League map pool for on and off for like three, four months right now. Uh, kind of ubiquitous at this point. A lot of people played on it. A lot of people know it. It's a little confusing, but I think it's a very fun map, a uh, very balanced map. So without further ado, let's look at the map itself. So one thing that stands out about Assassins is that you start off with your tank and your opponent starts off with a tank, giving you crucial fog of war on the, your opponent's side of the map. Giving you a little bit of peek of what your opponent's doing, but it's trapped behind this pipe seam with 99 health. And your little pathetic tank only does around 15% every turn, depending on your CO. So you have this nice little tank over here, which kind of forces an artillery from your opponent, and you need to build an artillery to kill this tank off. Some people like to go to mechs. I like to combine artillery and mech. Artillery does one shot, mech does the other, killing the tank. Uh, but basically you want to kill that tank not too early because it might interrupt your build and it might interrupt you capturing the center, but you need to kill it before it escapes from the pipe scene. Therefore, I advise attacking the pipe scene every turn to pressure your opponent to build an artillery or mech to deal with the tank. If you just sit there and don't do any damage, your opponent will just ignore the tank and take control of the center without any worries while you're forced to deal with your opponent's tank. So another thing about this uh, map, it's a little small. A little smaller HQ is pretty defended. It's got a black boat too, uh, airport on your weaker side. Uh, a lot of terrain as well. Most of the contested properties are these two right in the middle right here, as well as these ones over here near the HQ. Uh, your HQ side, it's your weak side, so your opponent typically will be take control of the mountain over there, giving your opponent a lot of vision. So you don't necessarily need a recon on your strong side because you'll have vision guaranteed almost with this mountain. Artillery are pretty decent on this map, plopping them into these floors next to the cities in, in order to ensure that you take control of the city. Uh, it's not really, one side doesn't really own one of these cities over here, so either side can control one, two, or zero of those cities. Um, and same goes with these over here. So there's no real set cities that are yours. I mean, this one's technically a little bit closer, I guess, to uh, red, and this one would go to black, uh, but you never really know. There's a comm tower as well. Typically, this is very tank strong map goes without saying a lot of copters a lot of tanks copters to do semi decently on this map you also have this other pipe scene over here that needs to be blasted eventually if you want your weak side to actually go into the center or else it has to slog all the way around past this woods over here all the way into the center so you typically want to break that pipe seam eventually sometimes with the same exact artillery that killed the tank you want to shift the artillery over here and blast that open as well and go to the center or you can just build a new artillery and do whatever you want with the other artillery that you built in the first place so you basically want to blast the pipe seams through eventually. Attack this pipe seam with your own tank and kill the pipe seam on your own side, assuming you're red. Uh, and then, yeah. So that's basically the main premise of Assassins. It's a pretty ubiquitous map, pretty straightforward for the most part, nothing too insane. Mechs are somewhat viable because I can cross this river over here pretty easily and get to the center. Uh, but I typically don't mech spam, maybe if you're Sammy or something, but maybe one mech a game on this map. I typically don't build more than one if I'm going to build one at all. Uh, so that's the main premise of Assassins. Now let's look at the players themselves. So if you follow my channel somewhat at all, you probably know Tordred already. He was the number one fog. He loves his tanks. People call him Mr. Tank Tordred. Not actually, I just made that up right now, but I'm going to call him Mr. Tank Tordred from now on. So Mr. Tank Tordred, uh, he's been having a little bit of a slide recently. Everyone's been expecting his tank openings because they're not as, you know, caught off guard by them. They're expecting Tordred to spam tanks, no recons, just tanks. So people have been countering his tanks by building early copters, artillery in spaces to beat those tanks, uh, just anything to block the Tordred tanks. So he's been in a bit of a slide on the fog ladder. I'm not sure if he's in the top five even still. Uh, so people have had his number recently, but he's been playing a lot of games. He's been learning a lot. So he's in the midst of a slide. Meanwhile, but he's still a really good player. So even though he's in a bit of a slide, you know, he's still a top 10 fog player and incredibly strong. Meanwhile, we have in Kagark, who is just good at every single game mode. High fun, standard, fog. He was in the Mang's most recent uh, Grandmasters 2 tournament. He lost in the first round because he's a very, very uh, calculated player. He doesn't really like to uh, go really quickly, so he takes his time. He usually takes at least one to two days for his turns. He loves artillery. He's kind of like me. Uh, builds a lot of artillery and fog. Artillery aren't nearly as good in fog, but... 
If you can catch your opponent off guard, that can be devastating. And I like to build artillery, typically one to two a match. Same with Inca Gark. So uh, we have that brothership there um, with Inca Gark. So expect a few artillery when you play him. Um, also as well, just, you know, very strong player. You can't really beat him down easily. He's going to take... Games are typically long versus him. He's not going to let you get the upper hand first. Uh, so you, so you prepare for a slog when you're playing Inca Gark. Uh, so I played him before twice. I think I won one, lost one. I kind of got lucky in the one I won, so I'm not gonna, you know, I'll be a little humble. But um, anyway, so he chose Rachel on this map, which is very strange. So let's talking about the CEOs. Rachel is not good on this map because, first of all, Rachel is not as good as in Fog. Uh, she's a lot better in Standard. Number two, there's three bases. Rachel is strong on maps where there's two bases, so it's harder to create those infantry balls. More things are blasted by her missiles. So this is like the worst, one of the worst maps for Rachel. I mean, it's kind of small, which makes it decent, but like. I don't know why Inca Gark chose Rachel on this map, especially versus Andy. So the thing is, everyone thinks, oh, Andy beat Rachel, Andy beat Rachel, Andy always better than Rachel. It's not that simple, okay? Andy is pretty good against Rachel for the most part, but I'd say Rachel has the upper hand against Andy in two base standard maps because you can't hide from the missiles in the fog and there's only two bases. Rachel wins in that scenario. Three bases standard, pretty even. Either of them probably won't use their power. So I'd say pretty dead even Rachel versus Andy Standard, three bases. Uh, Fog, two bases, mm, pretty equal there. Maybe I give the upper hand to Rachel. Maybe I give the upper hand to Andy. It's kind of hard to say with two bases. Three bases, Fog, Andy wins all day. No questions asked. Andy's just better in Fog uh, with three bases than Rachel is. That's just a fact of life. Um, typically, if you're choosing Rachel and Fog with three bases, maybe you're trying to get your opponent off guard who's choosing Kindle or Drake or something. But versus Andy, you're, you're basically at a handicap. So Inkagark has this handicap at the beginning, and I'm sure Tordred is ecstatic to see this matchup here, because it is just not fair in terms of Rachel. You can make easy artillery balls with your three uh, bases pumping out infantry every turn, uh, and then you can just heal them up using an Andy superpower. So Rachel really can't use her superpower, and even if Andy pops his superpower, he basically dictates the game. Andy can use his superpower before Rachel can, but Rachel can't use her superpower before Andy does. So Andy has that flexibility that Rachel is not afforded. So basically, I would say this is going into Andy's. I'd say Andy should win this matchup like 7 out of 10 times. Like, it's that lopsided, in my opinion. So Inkerark's a really good player. I mean, he's gonna he's, his hands are full. He's playing versus Tordred. Granted, it's a tilting Tordred, but it's still a strong-ass player of Tordred. Mr. Tanky, after all. So... Anyway, without further ado, let's get into this game itself, because it is a pretty long game. I'm going to go a little slower this time. Some people ask me to slow down the pace of my games to see the battles, talk about the battles, etc. Let me know if you think the pacing is too fast, too slow. Just throw it in the comment section. And uh, anyway, let's get into that game itself. Inca Gark is the number one player. I might just call him Ink because it's easier. So Ink goes to the top, attacks with his tank as you're supposed to do, just to put some pressure on Tordred to make sure he doesn't blast out of there. Uh, so... You know, standard infantry builds, you go for the base here at the bottom, you go for the base here at the top, it's typical. If you have a base that's two, three turns away, go on and go grab it. Don't go, don't get cute and go for the cities. So Tordred goes super offensive and goes for the middle properties immediately. Doesn't even go for the easy properties over here, just immediately going for the middle. I think that's kind of the meta these days. Uh, so it's not too strange. Yeah, it seems like that uh, that Mr. Incog did the same thing. So you typically you streak towards the middle. Try to get these two properties as soon as possible. I mean, even sometimes people skip this cap over here and go for the middle so they get that nice chain over here, or this one over here, then the chain to that one. So there's a lot of neat little chains hidden about on this map. Uh, so each of them is using their tank to attack. So we're going to expect to see an artillery probably within the next two turns. The tank also provides crucial uh, intel. Uh, Tordred goes for, or Inkigar goes for the artillery super early. You know why? Because... Uh, Actually, I don't know why. I thought for a second I was like, oh, Tordred's Kindle, and he's not Kindle. So this is a little early for an artillery. I don't quite agree with that. I think a recon might be good this early just to put some pressure on the middle because this tank isn't getting out of there anytime soon. The uh, the pipe seems at 54%, so not even halfway there yet. Uh, neither of them has a tower to even speed up that break in the pipe seam. So a little early for the uh, uh, artillery. I probably would have waited one more turn, but I mean, Inkagark, he loves his artillery. Uh, so maybe just wanted to plop one out as soon as possible. Tordred also going for the uh, artillery one turn later since he's player one. He pops his, uh, his uh, whatever the hell artillery out too. Actually, no, they're the same. They're the same shit. So both of them going for the early artillery. I like to delay. I like to get a recon first. Maybe even a tank first. But there's no way that tank's getting out that super quickly. 
Neither of them going to the, for the mech build so far, it seems. They're both just going for infantry. See, streaking towards the middle here, I wouldn't be surprised if Tordred stops this cap and starts this cap over here and switches this infantry over there. That's typically like the meta these days. And you can also be really ballsy over here and grab these two properties because it's hard to defend. Even though it's closer to the red player at the top, it's also very hard from this space all the way over there versus two bases. It's kind of hard to contest these properties, even if you have some uh, airport units. Get blasted on that city over there. They're both doing some normal infantry caps. Let's see. Tordred does the little sneakeroo. Uh, looks like Inkagark might do the same thing where he just goes for the middle over here. You try to go for the middle as early as possible because it's kind of hard to knock out your opponent's cities later when they have artillery plop there in the forest. So you want to interrupt caps and grab those caps as early as possible. Nope, does not go for the early one. Eyes this over here, so looking for the double cap. So maybe grab this one, this one, this one, and this one. Assuming Inkogark isn't feisty and going for these properties early. We'll see what Inkogark does. Still no middle presence, no recons, no tanks. I typically like doing that. I mean, Tordred is a late recon. I would have liked that one more turn earlier before the uh, artillery, but I guess I wanted that city pretty early. So typical standard stuff. Standard stuff. Builds the second artillery. I told you guys, Inkogark loves the artillery. I can't blame him. Artillery are sexy. I'm just joking. Artillery are actually pretty bad in fog and not that great on this map. But I can see why you'd want to plop one over here, maybe in this forest, and then, I don't know, or near this mountain as well. You have like infantry all over here. You put an artillery on one of those properties over there or somewhere placed there, and then you have an anti-air, and good luck getting past that, basically. So Tordred has more of a strong middle presence right now, looking like didn't go for the double cap, probably assumed that Inkagark was already capping that, so just not got getting too greedy. Although in this instance, I think he could have gotten greedy. Uh, whoa, did that artillery just attack that? Okay, interesting. Usually you want to withdraw that. You don't really care about this little pipe over there. It doesn't really matter, uh, unless you have the tank there. So I don't know why he was attacking that right there, but to each their own. Pretty standard stuff. Builds a, me a late mech. Okay, I... You know, each of them have their own builds. I would have built it earlier and plopped one hit on the artillery, attacked with the mech, did the kill, and then you can withdraw your artillery a turn earlier to either blast this pipe over here or hand it up, hit it down the highway on the left over there. So, a little strange, but you know, Tordred knows what he's doing. Inkagark bringing in that recon. I like the recon. Even though it's late as hell, it's still pretty good because you need the vision anyway for the... Uh, for the artillery, although it probably needs to go in the middle because you're going to get that mountain anyway, so there's no reason to have a recon over here anyway. It probably just wants to go in the middle to see what's going on rather than go hanging out on the side over there. Although I would have liked one of the artillery coming over here to blast that pipe seam. And that's typically why you build artillery on this map, to kill the tank and to kill the pipe seam, so. But, uh, you know, Inkagark, he's got his own little planies going on here. Another thing about this base over here, I typically don't really build tanks over here. If I'm building tanks, I build the top two tanks over here because this one's a perfect one for infantry because they can just cross the river and just go into the middle pretty much immediately. Mechs and uh, infantry, that's my mech and infantry uh, base typically. So when I'm spamming out shit, I'm typically reserving that for infantry and whatnot. As you can see over here, that's where the mech came out. Uh, that's where you typically expect some infantry. Yeah, nothing too crazy so far. Sorry, I don't, I don't know why I did that. Um, getting some attacks off, trying to get the one city advantage basically early. Not, not too greedy. I mean, Tordred, he... Okay, just move there. So, t see, these were both are not capped early, even though they're close to the players themselves. It's on the weak side, so Tordred... Uh, Inkogark has not captured any of these. Tordred have not captured any of these. Not even close to capturing either, um, either of them. Uh, tank over here. Um, all right. Hurts my feelings, but, you know, I, I, can, I can live with that. I really can. And then, so bringing out the infantry, see the recon going over here, see what's going on. See, you're not going to stop that cap, though. Does he go for the attacks? I don't think so. Be being very patient. Plopping that artillery there like, hey, man, go ahead, cap it. See what happens. So Inkerarch's a very patient player. Not only calculated, but also very patient, which is like a really strong combination there. You're going to have some long games, but he's going to be smarter and wear you down. It's a war of attrition with Inkerarch. There's no, like knockout punches earlier on. He's not gonna knock you out early. You're not gonna knock him out early. He's just like very slow, very patient. Like not even like Eagle or like any like a stall CEO really, but just, you know, patient anyway. It just doesn't matter the CEO. That's just his personality. Which is, you know, cool. Finally Tordred going to blast this over here. And both of them kinda at a standstill. 
Nothing really going on. Just building up forces, building the early anti-air as he should. Smart Tordred, sensing the copter. Didn't even need to know it was there. Built it the prophylactic anti-air. Smart move. Uh, yeah, blast this open. Pretty pretty solid start for Tordred over there. These are getting a little feisty infantry over there. I mean, they might die. Doesn't have anyone in the uh, mountain though, so can't see. Uh, but Inkar get, getting some easy kills over here. Uh, gonna probably plop that. See, very patient. Didn't go for the cap earlier on. Went for the cap now. Bringing in that uh, artillery now that there's a huge infantry wall. If you somehow break through the infantry wall, there's another artillery cap uh, covering this space over here to attack the uh, the artillery. So there's, it's kind of hard to break through that right now. And look, there's an infantry wall for the infantry. There's an infantry wall for the infantry wall. Like, good luck. Like, he's going to capture that property. There's no stopping it at this point. So instead of rushing in there and like, I'm behind my properties. Inkergard's like, eh, I'll wait a couple turns. Gets all the artillery ready. Gets all the infantry ready to wall. And he starts capping. Doesn't really care. It's like, whatever. I'm like, well, what's the rush? Builds his own little anti over there. And probably Tordred's going to build a copter over here. So it's like, bread and butter. These guys are smart. They know the meta. Oh, actually gets through. Uh, I guess that was a high roll with that tank over there. I think that's... That's pretty high roll. I don't think that should normally kill. So he got a little lucky there. I'm not going to lie. Uh, Inkergar probably pissed off about that. But doesn't can't really go for a follow-up attack on this uh, artillery anyway. But even though he killed that uh, recon right there, it's going to get blasted, that tank, by the artillery. And knocked out in two hits by the artillery plus the tank. So not the best exchange. But uh, hey, he killed a recon, I guess. So, yep. Bye bye. See, so you attack with the units from the back first. You do not attack from the units in the first, so you can have a follow-up attack. With this tank, can do something to those or, uh, those infantry right there. Just the thing to do. See, contested over there. Gonna get that. Gonna get got that over there. So I guess this this one is typically for the weak side player, and this one over here is for the strong side player. Seems how it usually works out. Looks like we're gonna be even Stevens in terms of income anyway in the center as well. Uh, just judging by the caps, because Inkergark's about to get that cap. Kills off a free little Infy. Throwing in two artillery in the middle, that's kind of scary and annoying simultaneously. Uh, we're getting also pretty close to the power meter. We're getting about near the CO power range. So each player, a couple more turns, each of them have a super CO power. See how they use them. Building a recon late. Uh, that thing should have lived with one HP. I think that was a super lucky roll for Tordred. So... Inkerk pretty pissed off by that, but still bringing a recon because you need vision in the middle. This is going to go around there into the middle. Uh, still hasn't blasted his pipe scene though, so it's going to be a long ass road to get to the middle over there. Uh, so, you know, Tordred taking his time, but uh, I mean, Inkerk taking his time breaking that pipe scene. I think it has to be broken eventually, or it's just it's just really annoying and inefficient to not break it and then have to slog away all around where your opponent gets faster reinforcements than you do yourself. So, Inkerk has a pretty solid turn. Pretty defensive right here, defensive formation, but still offensive pressure as well. You kind of have to back off if you're uh, tortured at this point. It's a beautiful infantry wall. Tank comes in, gets a nice hit, but needs to have a follow-up to kill that tank right there. Gets, kills one tank, though, and just goes all in. I mean, he saw that there was an artillery there. He's like, eh, F it. Like, I'm going in the middle regardless. Like, tank's going to get hit by an artillery anyway. I'm just going all in. So Tordred's going all in at this point. I think his thought process was... Hey, Inkergar's going to damage me, but I'm going to get my super CO power and heal it all back, and it won't even matter in the end. Which is pretty smart. I mean, like, that's all you really need. Like, Andy can afford to be more reckless than the other COs. Like, do whatever the hell you want. Do you. Yeah, you know, Nike, just do it or whatever the hell. Uh, I'm going to need that $20, Mikey, by the way. JK, I have no sponsorships. And then Inkergar suddenly breaks out the Lucky Lash, which basically gives him 40% more luck. Random, like, and up to 40% more luck. So it's kind of like a firepower bonus, basically. Except it's worse than a firepower bonus because you can't really count on it. Gets a pretty damn nice roll over there with the Lady Luck with the Copter over there. Getting a lot of nice kills, but the thing is, if you're... Ooh, nice roll there. Killing an 8 HP infantry, that is a great roll. Which is pretty nice. Brings op and open these attacks over there, can kill off the mech now. The thing about Lady Luck versus Andy is you need to kill units because Andy's going to repair everything that isn't dead the next turn. So Lady Luck is a real gamble. Instead of having this game of chicken between, you know, superpower, superpower, Rachel or Andy, Inkergark's basically saying, F that shit. I'm not doing any game of chicken. I'm doing my own dang thing. I'm going for the kills. Uh, so he needs to get a lot of damage done. A lot of kills done, not damage. Damage isn't enough. Like, that mech's coming back at 7 HP. Like, you need to have it killed. Hits it over there with the uh, tank. 
Getting a seat. Killed off two tanks over there, but that's going to be fully healed. The mech's going to come in and do a lot of damage, so you need to be 100% sure you're doing a lot of damage. But, I mean, Ginkar did pretty decent with uh, that damage so far. Like, uh, let's see. I'll, at the end of the turn, I'll look back. And let's see here. Three tanks. Four tanks total for uh, one. So it killed three tanks. Not a bad use of the Lady Luck. Late Lucky Lass. I don't even know. They're all the same shit anyway. Or pretty close to it. So, Tordred not popping the super yet. Getting some damage done to himself. So he can heal that up. Pretty smart move right there. Hyper upgrade. Everything is healed. Look how far behind he is on unit value though. And unit count. Like, that was a pretty devastating Lady Luck. They're both tied up for the amount of properties. They're both pretty tied up in general on that front. But in terms of units and in terms of uh, unit value, Inkergarp is pretty commanding lead in that. Although that's quick to change. Oof, after that copter, that's like, look at that. That's so much damage being done right now. Boom. In that mech, they thought, he was, they, they thought it was dead. Nah, uh, ooh, both the artillery taking a spanking right now. Ouchie. So Victoria Dread is really breaking through right now. That was a nice lady luck and all, but like... And smart move on bringing the copters to the middle. Typically in this map, you want to bring the copters to the middle instead of going straight up because they always have an anti-air ready. It's just so obvious. That, I mean, the airport's over here. You have a base over here. It's going to build an anti-air eventually, maybe even early. Like, just go to the middle. Maybe even attack on that side over there. Just stay away from the obvious areas that the copters are going to get killed at. So, getting a lot of kills now, though. Didn't kill off the uh, anti-air, but it doesn't really matter because Inkergark is Rachel after all. He is not Andy, so he will not heal as easily as Inkergark will, or that Tordred will. So now Tordred turned the tides ahead in your account and ahead in unit value. So, as you can see, power superpowers can really turn the tide quite quickly in this match. So we've already had one exchange of supers and powers, and Tor surprisingly, Inkergark is not going the full retreat. He is actually staying behind, attacking with these weakened artillery. I probably would have withdrew, but I guess he figures he can get a nice infantry wall. Kills off the mech, not bad. Gonna probably kill off that tank with some nice luck rolls. Let's see. No. Oh, killing with the anti-air. I like that. Smart move. Uh, it's also defended. It's not like he's just hurling the anti-air to the front lines without any defenses. Uh, pretty, pretty smart move. It's hard to break through this, actually. You have to use the anti-air to kill that infantry to break through these walls over here. Because you can't break through the 7-1 because you can't see it because it's in the forest. Uh, so pretty good infantry walls by Inkagark. I think that's why he, if you don't have sound infantry walls, you absolutely retreat. But he knew what he was doing. Look at this nice wall right here. You're not breaking through that very easily. So now Inkagark has a slight lead on the, on the counts. However, Tordred is able to blast through. Boom. Boom. And probably use... Let's see how he kills that infantry. Ooh, yeah, and the copter, too. Decent hit. Decent hit. Uh, but can't break through. So he's not going to get any follow-up attacks on that unit, on those units over there, which would have been nice. There's an anti-air, but it's weakened, so it's going to be difficult killing that copter. Uh, yeah, can't reach over there with the copter as well, so... That copter is going to be flying pretty fr pretty right now. And also, if you don't kill off the copter, Tordred loves that shit. Gives him charge. And then when he gets his superpower, the copter's gonna get five more HP. So an injured copter is really Andy loves that shit. Gives him charge. As, as long as you damage the anti-air, make sure your copters live. Like, you love that shit as Andy. Like, it doesn't matter if you take a spanking from an anti-air, as long as it lives. So, bringing the tanks over here, blasting through, still hasn't broken that pipe seam. Like, will this be the undoing of Inkagart? Not bringing that pipe seam. Look how long it takes to get over here. Look at more artillery, five spaces a turn. But that's going to take four turns to get to the front line. Like, Inkagard, like, man, what you doing, boy? Like, come on. So, uh, Tordred, on the other hand, just tanky. Mr. Tank earns the name. I mean, still been in two anti-air over here. So, like, pretty feisty. I guess expecting, like, a real buildup of copters. Uh, but Inkagard, which Inkagard is not actually doing. Uh, Going for another Lucky Lass with, like, weakened-ass shit over here, but I guess the, the infantry might do a lot. Ooh, nice roll again. Nice roll. Nice roll. Ooh, good follow-up attacks. Kill that tank, then get on the city. Ooh, kill. Boom. Ooh, that is a nice, that is a nice roll. He got really lucky there. That's nice, though. Yeah. This is gonna serve Andy. Ooh, but maybe... Oh, 
man, Inkagar getting some real nice rolls there. That could have been disastrous if it didn't work out like that. Ooh, nope, didn't go for the kill. I guess going for the kill with the tank instead because he sees that the uh, artillery is right there. Get out of artillery range. I mean, this tank's dead anyway, let's be honest. Uh, but that was a nice, those are some solid rolls from Inkagar. You gotta be happy with that. Uh, but Tordred, actually not that close to getting a superpower. Actually still only halfway there. Because, I mean, the powers are cheaper for Rachel than, you know, Andy superpowers. So that hurt. No doubt about that. Going for the infantry rolls on this, but not getting it. I mean, it's not a huge deal because it's not going to heal itself. It's not Andy, but still it's frustrating, you know? It kills off a reek on there that turned into a ghost and died. Uh, happens. Really feisty uh, copter over here. Blatantly in, like, range. But I guess sensing that this... There might be like a sweet spot because that artillery is pretty much, or anti-air is almost dead. And that there might not be one ready to reinforce, which is true, but there's a copter. So he was right on that count, but there's still a copter. And that uh, copter very likely will die after getting hit by a copter and two more attacks. So I would assume he'd finish it off. Now the copter spam has begun. There's copter spam on both sides at this point. Because they have that like, 21,000 like income, that's kind of like... You start spamming a copter every turn, like, why not? Medium tanks, they take a long time to get to the front lines. Copter spam can kill medium tanks, like, three copters to a medium tank is hard to kill. Although, Andy, I'm more inclined to build heavy things like medium tanks, uh, bombers, neo tanks, just because the power's uh, really hard to take down. Even if you weaken or cripple one of those, like, medium tanks and whatnot, really hard to break. Really go going for this little feisty little cap over there. See, it lived, but if two more attacks, it's dead. Uh, that's a little too ambitious, I'd say. Although if he brought it down to five and Andy was able to get the superpower there, maybe it was justified, but... Yep, it's gonna die in that infantry right there. Yep. So, like I said, two follow-up attacks on the copter and it's dead. It's just worth killing because it's gonna come back with a vengeance if you don't kill it. Inkagar wants a head-to-head in unit count, but pretty even for the most part, like... And Tortured hasn't even used his uh, power yet. So, hmm, okay, using the artillery to kill off an infantry, I guess. Uh, going for the cap here, I guess, assuming that, like, hey, I'm gonna get my superpower soon, like, why not? Okay, 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 breaking through that wall, nice. Bringing the tank in, getting a nice hit on that artillery. Bringing, wrapping it around, but there's an artillery, like, oh my god, look how many damn artillery Inkagark has. It'd take forever to get to the front lines, building triple tanks this turn, though. Uh, kind of, you know, feeling bad for building all of those artillery, I guess, who wants to go triple tanks now. Uh, but still, like, ugh, the slog, man. It's, we're sort of on the Inkagark side of the map because Tordred's on the offensive on his front foot. Uh, if I'm Inkagark, I don't know if I can go on the offensive this turn. I think you have to fall back. Because if you attack and you don't kill off a lot of units, Tordred is going to smash you with his superpower. So it's time to reassess... Before, when he was on his back foot, he's like, all right, I'm not done, I'm coming. He used Lucky Lass and, you know, kept at it. This time, it's like, you're close to Lucky Lass, maybe a third Lucky Lass, but, like, I think it's time to, you know, maybe back up a bit. Like, maybe kill off this tank with the artillery and kill it with this tank, but, like, everything else, you know, just back up a bit. Like, they're gonna live. See what Dink and Kugark does. Yeah, kills off the tank. That's an easy choice, but I think you should pull back. Just pull back, man. Kills off the enemy. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, pulling back. Giving up the city, though. I mean, it sucks. Although, look. Oh, no, I can get hit up with the artillery. Are you gonna hit it? What? 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 Now Tortured has lead income. 2,000 income advantage. Which is not devastating, but it kind of sucks. Plants the artillery in this force that you love to see, finally. Kind of coalescing the center. Basically like, eh, I have no reason to really go on the offensive right now. Like, I have the income lead. Like I said earlier in my videos, like, if you have the lead, just chill, man. Unless you're facing, like, Eagle or some global damage shit, like, just chill. He's not facing Rachel. I mean, he's facing Rachel. He gives a shit. Rachel can build up her forces, but Andy's gonna build up just as well, so that's not really something to be scared of. Getting a recon for some vision. Uh, yeah, not really scared. By the way, this, yeah, this pipe scene finally has shown that it is broken. It was broken earlier, but it didn't show it. We're at turn 17, so. Inkagar kind of chilling, get some free infantry kills over there. Ahead in unit value, or unit count, kind of behind on unit value a bit until after he builds some stuff, you know? 
Kind of has to do something, though. You can't really just sit there forever. I mean, the unit, your units heal faster because you're uh, Rachel rather than Andy. I mean, you get three three repairs every turn for a city, but, like, you gotta do something, you know? Like, Although, Tordred not being chill anymore. Going on the offensive. I don't know if I agree with that, but really just wanting to get some kills, I suppose. Uh, I mean, it's only in range of one artillery, so it's not terrible, but I, I thought he was doing better when he was just chilling. Like, why don't you just chill with the lead and your super? Like, why not just chill? And then when you have a huge amount of units, you plow in, get everything damaged, and then use your super. Like, that is what I would do with Andy. Um, or maybe just even hold on to it for the Rachel super. Like, Although I, I can see why maybe you go on the offensive, because you're afraid that Rachel, she only has a power right now, but if you let it be, things build up, she'll eventually have her super. So maybe that's why Tordred went on the offensive here, but let's see how damaging. Uh, yeah, so you lose a copter, you lose a tank. You're going to lose another tank, two tanks. So that, not pretty. And the copter's kind of defended from another anti over there. And I think this anti is dead anyway. So, yeah, not a great... Uh, turn of events, and Ikigark is kind of ahead, uh, nearing that superpower right now. So still ahead on the income, but lost a little bit of tempo going the offensive right there. Like I said, probably should have chilled a bit. I mean, I, I see why you wouldn't, but like, man, the copter chain has begun. Five little copters. Uh, that's not even a song. I don't know where that came from. Uh, but there's a lot of copters, and they're, they're building a little copter formation over here. They're doing a little flyby thing or something or other. Now Inkagark is going on the offensive. Tordred is kind of giving up the middle and like, how do you interrupt those caps? Like, Tordred, what you doing, bro? You're on the offensive so so soon ago and now look at this. Look at this death ball. That is literally a death ball right there. If you were Rachel over here, you'd love that shit, but he's not, he's Andy, so. So many copters. These guys are going nuts for copters. I'd like to kind of see like a Mio tank or a medium tank for uh, Tortured at this point. It's kind of hard to kill off those shits. So maybe not as many copters. Maybe get some bulky units. See this? Yeah, that's going to be shut down. But this one is not going to be as easily shut down. So Tortured has to get his units in position. Make sure that they're... Oh yeah, preparing the infantry ball. Look at that. That is definitely going to get hit, hit, hit by the Rachel superpower. If it does come. I mean, Inkagar could pop his power again. He's been popping powers. Dropping powers every other turn, basically, for the most of the game, so... He's pretty comfortable. It's not... Some people are scared to use the Rachel's, you know, normal power. They're afraid that they're not going to get much value out of it, but... Inkagark, he's got these brains up here, and he's like... Mmm... Mmm... Yep, going to kill about 37,000 worth of units. And then, I mean, maybe the super kill is 34,000, and it's just calculated like that. So we got a shit ton of copters. Which is, you know, cool. Finally builds the beefy old medium tank. Now we talking. Bust that bad boy and still rip the... How is he reinforcing enough over here? That's, I guess supplemented by copters it's easier, but like... That takes a long time to reinforce. And if you get over here with a tank, that's kind of... You're in like a danger zone over here. You're not defended by these units. So if you come around here, a couple tanks over here. Boom, bitch. You did. So, uh, kill off that freaking thing. My god, you have so many copters. You send, like, four copters. One copter here, one copter here, one copter here. Three copters a turn. Two turns, it's gone. Basically, you have the power. I mean, you have the comm tower. You know, just kill that freaking stupid little thing. Not killing it, though. I swear, these things, they, they make me angry. Getting in that nice... See, you love these for the artillery. And, look... He got control of it, not looking as good, but still can't capture those properties. Tor Judge is like, you know what? I'm gonna hang back, but I'm not letting those things get capped. Like, I might be chilling, but I'm not letting those things get capped. I want my income lead. So I assume he's gonna throw another infantry into the fire next turn, maybe? Yep. And his maker, soon to be dead, plopping the artillery over here now, but leaving this one unguarded. Uh, and the artillery, I mean, the recon clearly sees that, so it's like, okay, I guess I'm going for this property the next turn, so. Look at these freaking copters, my god, five copters. Ugh. I mean, I like copters and all, but like, I don't know, so many copters. I mean, that's gonna get hit by a Rachel superpower. I guess that's why they're all clumped together like that. They wanna get hit by a Rachel superpower. One will go over here and two will go over here. You'll repair both of them up, no problem. Medium tank incoming. 
I probably would have built another medium deck right there, but uh, see, now capturing this property is like, I saw your stupid little artillery over there. I'm just gonna capture this one. Like, what are you gonna do about it? Are we gonna see the power? No. Not really. Let's see what happens here. They're both so patient. Tordred normally isn't patient, but if he wants to be patient, he can. It's just like a robot, like, oh, I see how the game's going. I need to be patient. All right, sure. I can just play both ways. Me, on the other hand, I'm not patient. I need to win before, like, turn 30 or just do die and lose or some shit. So, finally, going to kill this. One hit medium tank, one hit artillery. That thing is goners with a Z. This OCD shit, making them not move at all, but just putting end. Some people are like that. I'm not. Will Tordred go in and interrupt that cap? We shall see on next episode. Not doing jack shit. Move the tank back and attack with the infantry? Ooh, not even... Is he gonna let him have it? Okay, Copter going in. I would have attacked with this infantry and just let it die. Copter is pretty bold. I guess he sees the artillery and is you know, asking for an uh, anti-air to come in and kill it or something. But, like... Okay, well, he got what he wanted, and he's no cap this turn, I suppose. And it won't be... You can't cap this one either, because there's an artillery right there. Incuriarch's going in. Incuggy. Coming in. Coming in hot. Not super... Not fully committed, but slowly moving the death ball down. Bringing the artillery into a very aggressive position. Which, this tank will easily die, you know, to, like, a super... Especially with all these copters and shit over there, like... We have now reached the ch game of chicken part where both of them have the superpower. No one wants to pop it first, it seems. Uh, so... It's turned into one of those games, I mean, Inkyark was seemingly keen on preventing that early on, but now it's just like, whatever, like... I'll play chicken, whatever. Really, 44 units though, 44. There's a 50 unit cap, just for you guys that don't play Advanced Wars Global League. 50 unit cap. So we are getting near the cap right here. We're talking about a very stally game. We're talking about four units pumped every turn. Copter, three units. Copter, three units. So two more turns and he's going to be over the cap. Assuming nothing dies, but something will die because you're, you're intruding on Tordred territory. And, uh, yeah. One hit KO? Yeah, looks like Tordred's going in for the kills. Going in for the kill. The Tordred has sounded the alarm bell. I probably would have gone over here, attack here, and then it followed up with the infantry, but, you know, whatever. Uh, not fully committing. Seemingly just going for a little bit. Trying to bait the superpower and then probably going after. I'm assuming this this is definitely going to draw one of the missiles. It's going to draw two of them. Let's see if Ankergark uses the superpower. Probably not. Uses the power. Alright, so basically that is inviting Tordred to just go all in with his units next turn. So I don't... I probably would have just held on to that. Although if that, that could have been a one-hit KO right there. That artillery to medium tank with max luck, I think that's a one-hit KO. So he got a little unlucky for once. He's been having so many good rolls. Finally not getting a good roll. But that medium tank's dead anyway. Look at these copters. They're going to murder it. It's not going to be pretty. Oh yeah, it's so dead. So, so, so dead. Copter coming in for the tank. Infantry attacking a tank for some reason, I guess. Ooh, that was actually pretty close. Bringing that three HP. Nope, just full HP. Dead. 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 Look how many units are dying. This is a massacre of Lucky Last proportions. Ooh! Didn't die. It's gonna come. Didn't die. I, I kind of would have killed that artillery, to be honest, because these are both gonna come back with a vengeance. So Inkagark has a huge lead right now. 20... 200,000 units. 200,000 units. And soon to add even more with that nice little income. Over 200,000 units. Still behind in the income now. Ahead in units by 12. Behind in income by 2,000. Ahead in unit count by... Uh, or ahead in unit value by 70,000. But... When you use Lucky Lass, Tordred's gonna be popping that super. So, boom, first strike has begun. Getting off some easy hits then, boom, here comes the hyper upgrade. Gets about 
Ching! 10,000 worth back. Dead. But here comes the massacre. Doesn't quite kill. But a lot of things are going to die this turn. Boom. Boom. The copters are coming in. Boom. Boom. Bloombers. Boom. All the way over here. Look at that. Let's get an instant replay on that artillery. Or anti-air. Beep, beep. Maximum movement. Kill. Infantry is having a field day. Copters coming in. Still can't really kill those copters back there, though. Killing some tanks and shit, but like... Oh, no, never mind. Boom. Bah. Out of the woodwork, that copter came. Boop. Still building a bunch of shit. Cheap units. Not really building any more medium tanks. Both of them. Well, there's one medium tank over here, but Tordred. Wow. Don't look now, but... About to be ahead on every single count. Unit count, income, and unit value. So that was pretty wild turn. I mean... And look at all these black units over here. Like, that's... is. I think Agurga has to keep on in it. Like, keep killing shit. He can't really back off. Because, like... There's, like, a sunk cost fallacy. But this is not a sunk cost fallacy. This is a real sunk cost. Once you're that involved in a battle, you can't really just back off. You need to continue to do damage to justify the attack in the first place. Another lucky lass. We're talking dubs lucky lasses. Lucky lass. Let's go LL. Lucky LLC, lucky last charge. Fun fact. I don't. That wasn't even a joke. That was just bad. Okay. Um, bringing in a bunch of shit. Attacking infantry to tanks, getting pretty lucky rolls. Going infantry to. Okay, that was an unfortunate roll for him. Boom! But there's gonna be a lot of copter deaths. Doing a lot of damage, and Tortred is not getting any charge from this either. He's losing a lot of units, but he's not getting any charge because. Uh, Ingegarg attack during his super, so that's this is pretty devastating. Ooh, and he got a lucky roll on that too. Ooh. Ooh, okay, almost got the kill. So Torch is happy about that, but oh my god, look at all this shit. Damn. Boom. 33 units. Oh my god, look how much. Let's do an instant replay of the turn. Nine, not 90,000. Started off at 16,000, lost 70,000 in units. 11 units total. Look at all that. Look at all these little tankies and stuff and copters. What, one, two, three, four, five, six copters in the front line. Two. Two survived. Dead four copters. How many tanks? One, two, three, four, five, six tanks on the front line. One, two, Three, four. Okay, only lost a couple tanks, but lost a lot of units. Let's not kid ourselves. That artillery uh, anti over there had an early grave. That recon. So this is how do you? Because he has artillery over here. Late artillery. I like artillery earlier on. Late artillery don't make as much sense as early artillery because you have to plant them early, then they shoot. You bring it too late to the party, uh, you're not gonna have a place to plant it because everything's already gonna be decided. So let's see what Torchlight can help. Torchdead could go both anything. Through the towel. Two lucky lasts. Four lucky lasses total. We're talking simultaneous lucky lasts. Four lucky lasses. I've never... That's a lucky last record. I've never seen that many lucky lasses in my life. Even out of sorority... Uh, sorority St. Patrick's Day theme, I've never seen that many lucky lasses. Uh, so let's look at the... Let's look at the stats on that. How do I do that? Whoa. Oh. I don't know how to zoom in on this shit, so I'm gonna zoom in on the after, after stuff. But uh, Inkuggy looking pretty good on that count. Let's see what uh, compared to Torji. Oh, I can do it side by side. Damn, 18 tanks killed. Lost. Oh my god, Inkagark had really good KD ratio. Four cops, really good KD ratio. Generated a lot more funds. Torchred generated 30,000 more funds total due, due to his increased amount of stuff, but like, damn. Six artillery. Oh my god, in fog. In fog, six artillery. Not grit. Like, what? Still made it work, though? What the? Inkagarg is just a genius. Uh, if you give him time. Like, as you saw in the Manx tournament, like, if he's rushed, he won't do as good, but my freaking Jeez, just beat every single... Oh my god. Damage taken, 20,000. 
200,000, 280,000 kill, 80,000 more. Oh my god. That is brutal. Jeez. Anchor Arc is good, guys. Fortunately for Tordred, the Tordred slide continues, and he has lost. Uh, he might still be in the top 10, but I remember, I think this might have been a... It knocked him pretty low down there, even though Anchor Guard is top 5, so... Oof, that was, that was quite the game, I think. Even make this mistake earlier, not breaking this early, Anchor Guard early artillery positioning is really what sealed the deal. Plopping in this forest over there, making Tordred come in and attack. Like, Tordred should have chilled a bit, I think he should have chilled, because when he attacked early and had the income lead, it allowed Tordred to push back and start capping these properties, and Tordred had to throw in units to stop the caps every single turn. So I think that early attack over there should have been more patient. Even if he gives up Inkergark at the power or whatever, just take your 2,000 income lead and just chill. Build some Neo tanks, build some me uh, medium tanks, build some bombers, I don't care. Just build big, beefy units as Andy. Your units will survive for the most part. You'll use your hyper repair, you'll be fine. But he just got a little too feisty. I need the Tordred, you know. Mr. Tank kind of mentality, just attack, 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 tanks and whatnot. Ingergaard just let the trap there. It's like, hey man, I'm building six artillery this game. Come into my trap, he did. Boom, it's like a Venus flytrap or some shit going on here. So that was a pretty good game. Uh, so yeah, my one thing, the problem with Ingergaard is killed this thing earlier, but I guess it didn't really matter because like, I don't know how he made it, how he did that. Longer reinforcement time, but still one over here. That is really impressive to me. Winning with a longer reinforcement time. I guess the lucky last might have been the uh, ch game changer right there, but... And Tordred's a little bit, bit too cocky, I think, earlier on, attacking into this blob over here on turn... Um, I think the decisive turn was here. Like, why did you do that? Turn 17? Chill. Chill. Just you're fine. Look at this. Look at all these artillery and shit. Like, it's, they're weakened and whatnot. Just chill. You have a superpower, too? Like, you'd win here. Just chill. Why you do that? Why you do that? Now, you get on the offensive and for the rest of the game, pressuring the middle, rest of the game, pressuring the middle, rest of the If you didn't throw away two or three tanks or whatever right there and a copter, you'd be fine. So, anyway, I hope you guys learned something from Assassins, uh, the map. I hope you guys learned something, uh, yeah, I hope you guys learned something in general, I suppose. Hope you guys enjoyed, and uh, I guess see you guys next time. Bye-bye.